uh, coming to Latvia and the situation in this region particularly. Uh, Latvia joined NATO in 2004, 20 years have passed. How do you evaluate situation, security uh, situation in this region? I think Latvia has so much to be proud of. I think I made my first visit to Latvia. I was stationed in Belarus at the time. I did my first visit in, to Latvia in 2001. I visited back again in uh, about 2002 or 2003 as part of the effort to help uh, accelerate Latvia's entry into NATO as part of our efforts there. Um, and of course, I've, I've visited over time through my career. Um, We've seen the enormous progress Latvia has made, whether it's on rule of law, strengthening the judiciary, growing the economy, um, restoring and reviving Latvia's culture and traditions, to investment in the security, as you just mentioned. Um, I think Latvia's really made very smart choices to prepare today and for tomorrow. I already mentioned some of these weapon systems. Um, the National Military Service to bolster the readiness uh, of forces. I visited National Guard headquarters here, the Zemesardze, uh, to meet La La Latvian National Guard members, uh, to talk about their commitment for the future. These are all really smart investments that help Latvia be prepared as a NATO member to defend itself, but to contribute to the broader security, the message of Article 5 of NATO, the message of deterrence and defense, that we stand strong to defend each other uh, and to deter future aggression. I think Latvians can be very confident of what has been done and the pathway forward. Latvia, sort of last point, Latvia already is more, contributes more than 2% of its GDP towards defense. Um, Latvia has long been a leader in setting a very high standard so at about 2.4% this year and a determination to get to 3%. We see Latvia continuing to pave the way to set a very high standard and model for the rest of Europe and our NATO partners on what we need to do to be ready for the threats we face. Again, it's why I'm very proud to partner with Latvia. We will continue that security partnership. There's so much that happens in our military cooperation at the bases, in the development of the new Celia base, in training. In, we're conducting some of the biggest exercises in Europe right now that we've ever done. Mm. in partnership with Latvia. We learn from each other, we grow together, and we're stronger together. You mentioned article number five, and uh, Ben Hodges, um, former commanding general of US Army in uh, Europe, recently said that uh, article number five is not a laser beam, it's a political decision, and look what he said about eventual Russian attack in Baltics in a conference in Vilnius. Um, Take a look, um, a load of video. In this situation, uh, Russia attacks and we get caught by surprise, which should not happen, but you can't rule it out. Um, it will still, and, and if the nations all agree, this is Article 5. And of course, you know, sir, Article 5 is a political decision. Let's, let's say everybody agreed it's so Article 5 on the very first day. I think it's still going to be two weeks before additional NATO forces, at least ground forces, arrive. So in other words, Lithuania has to be prepared to fight for two weeks with what it has. Of course, that includes a German brigade, which is going to be dynamite. This is going to be a very, this will be the best brigade in the entire Bundeswehr. You've got American battalions that are here. And then, of course, the trajectory that your armed forces are on now, this is going to be very good. But there's not going to be anybody else getting there, I think, maybe for two weeks. Look, you can comment on that. Or you can add something. So how, I think there's article a number five, how does it work? So remember, for your, for your audience, yeah. article five is the foundational principle of collective defense, that attack against one is an attack against all. And remember, the only time it's been invoked is after the September 11th, 2001 attacks, terrorist attacks against the United States. Some countries like Latvia contributed troops and made great sacrifices in partnership with the United States. Others found other ways to support. Um, but let's look at where we are today. First, Latvia is investing in its own defense. Second, you already have uh, Canada uh, and its commitments with the Enhanced Forward Presence Battalion that will be here. Sweden and Denmark have committed to grow their troop presence as part of that effort. 
There is already a sizable NATO military presence in Latvia to bolster and provide that deterrence and defense. Um, and U.S. troops are here as well. Moreover, looking forward, at the Vilnius NATO summit last year, we committed to updating our deterrence and defense plans to be able to address exactly scenarios like this. I can't get into every hypothetical, what if this troop or that thing happened? But what we are working is to make sure we're ready to defend, as President Biden said, every inch of NATO territory today and tomorrow and for the long term to meet these challenges, the sustained Russian threat that we see. Again, I think we can be very confident. Let's go back to what happened in the, the first days of Russia's reinvasion of Ukraine. U.S. troops were here within hours. We are committed to that partnership. There is a strong NATO sense that we need to be united together. You see the greater awareness now across other NATO members of what that Russia threat means and to reinvest themselves in NATO. We have about, I think, 17 to 18 countries that will be at 2%, maybe 20 by the end of this year. Again, countries resourcing the need so that we are ready to defend every inch of NATO territory. I think Latvians can be confident in their security, and Russia knows full well the strength of NATO today.